Hi, this is Premjit from Sibilera.com. So let us discuss about a few points that people are confused about live load reduction and live load. Now, as we know, the name live load itself gives an indication that the load is not same all the time. So that's why it is called as a live load. Now, those who are interested, I suggest read my blog completely and understand what are the points that we are discussing here. So you can go to www.civilera.com slash blog to reach my blog. I will brief here a bit on what I have written here. So mostly people do not understand that live load indicated needs validation and is discretionary. What it means is that though most of us refer the code IS 875 part 2 only for verifying or getting the load values, uh, directly taking the load value may not be always a good thing. For example, sometimes the client might tell you that he wants a reading room and uh, you might consider a reading room load. But finally, you will end up having a library there if you don't discuss very correctly and properly and understand his requirement. A reading room can very easily become a library and the load considerations are too different so you have to take your discretionary decisions you have to engage clients and understand what they are looking for the same way somebody might come and tell you that what you want is a shop but that can turn into a storage space very soon so you have to take your discretionary decisions and take the live load in the right manner and then this is something which many might find it surprising. IS 875 part 2 has a clause on disproportionate collapse control. Now the clause is 0 0.3.3 in IS 875 part 2. It looks a little confusing if you read you might not understand it in the first read but I have summarized here what it means is that you will have to consider disproportionate collapse control even in projects in India and you have to ensure that your scheme is robust. Your scheme is really good so that a building doesn't undergo disproportionate collapse. Now what do you mean by disproportionate collapse control? I have another video in the YouTube and I also can give you more articles and more ebooks if you write to me either at contact at civilera.com or if you fill the form in the website www.civilera.com and mention what you are uh, wanting to have so this is what you can do if you want more information on disproportionate collapse control there is a youtube video as well another point i want to discuss is live load reduction and reduction of live load in mass source for seismic sources these cannot be taken simultaneously only one at a time so if you remember there are two kinds of live load reductions one that is mentioned in IS 875 part 2 and another as per seismic code 1893 so only one at a time again I have another blog on live load reduction for vertical loads which you can read in the blog section of our website www.civilera.com another point to look at is the load combinations so if you look at 1893-2002, which is an old code for seismic load calculations, it allows you to reduce live load in the mass source calculation. Even the new code 1893-2016 allows you to reduce live load in mass source calculation. But the difference is that the older code also allowed you to reduce live load in this load combination. 1.2 dead load plus 1.2 live load plus 1.2 eq so in this load combination you are allowed to take mass lateral mass reduction in the earthquake part as well as you are allowed to take the same live load reduction in the live load part but the new code has omitted this relaxation and it doesn't allow you to reduce live load in this combination so you have to take full live load in this combination and the mass source reduced live load in the mass source so 1893 to 2016 makes that difference it is a bit more stringent now many engineers feel that live load reduction 
is not applicable if the live load is more than 5 up to 5 you can reduce live load more than 5 you cannot live, reduce live load there are certain section of engineers who thinks this way which is not really right you can reduce live load even if the live load is more than 5 the only reason that you cannot reduce live load is when the live load is contributed by plant or machinery so if it is a machine room or something similar then you are not allowed to reduce live load in any conditions so if you read these clauses which i have mentioned here 321 and 3211 then there can be some confusion for a few of the readers because the clauses are a little complicated and when you read you will get a feeling that you cannot reduce live load if the live load is more than 5 but that's not the case even if your live load is more than 5 you can reduce live load for the vertical components but there are certain conditions which i have mentioned here so i suggest you read the blog and then ask me any questions that you might have so the blog can be found in www.civilera.com slash blog you can also write to me for more information on live load reduction so to conclude there are two kinds of live load reduction one is for the gravity loads because of the number of floors which is mentioned in is 875 part 2 and the second live load reduction is in the mass source the lateral load component where you can reduce live load and many times engineers especially the beginners think that is 875 part 2 is used only to refer the values of the live load it's not the case there are a lot of information in that so i suggest all of you read is 875 part 2 in full so thank you for listening this video i suggest for full information you read the blog in www.civilera.com thank you very much